Well, the Nigerian government has vowed to ensure the total reformation of the country's criminal justice system. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Latif Fagbemi, made this known while addressing Attorney Generals of over 15 states during the Southeast Special Policy Summit on Criminal Justice Reforms in Abakaliki in Ebony State. Fagwemi noted that the summit serves as an avenue for promoting access to both civil and criminal justice. In terms of deployment of alternative dispute resolution, plea bargaining and restorative justice in civil and criminal justice reforms in Nigeria. He blamed the delay in dispensation of justice delivery in the country on politicians who allegedly buy their way into the judicial process. Well, founder and team lead at Citizens Gavel, Nelson Olanikpeko, joins us now to share his perspective on justice dispensation and, in Nigeria and, of course, judicial system reforms. Welcome to the show. It's a good to have you here on a news day. Now, nice we're time. seeing a, a lot of... Uh, I think attention being paid to judicial reforms. I mean, just a few this entire uh, month or so, we've been seeing you know all eyes on the judiciary. So it's no, um, it's not new that we are here. But when we look at what has already been put forward, uh, the current reforms, how would you, um, how would you score uh, these reforms? Do you think that we're in the right direction, or are there other things that we should be focusing on at the moment? I think a lot needs to be done. A um, couple of years ago, a, a survey was done, and Nigerian confidence in the judiciary was at 68%. Uh, um, but at 2022, that, that survey was done in 2020, and at 2022, the, another survey was done, and it has reduced to uh, 72%. Now, this is 2023. With what has happened during the election, with the French controversial judgment, these We've all seen that the confidence level in judiciary has further dwindled, mm -hmm. which, which has raised the question, is the judiciary really protecting an average person um, in the streets? The, the judiciary is meant to be um, the last hope of the common man. It's meant to, when justice is passed in our court, you, you are expected to see justice. You know? You shouldn't just read it. You should, people should feel that justice has been done and not just hear it. But it's far-fetched from what you see on the ground. There are lots of allegations of corruption. Even the AGF just said it. People buy their way into the judiciary to compromise the justice system. And that is why it's very imperative for Nigerians at this moment, at this critical moment of our, our democracy, to watch the judiciary. Who is watching the watchers? No one. And that is why at Citizen Gavel, we're trying to pull a coalition of Nigerians together to keep eyes on the judiciary. Because it's the last belt from anarchy. Once the judiciary fails, everybody starts to carry harm. You know, why is, um, um, at the moment, why is the you know, picking up arms and, and clumbing people when they commit crime, jungle justice, why is it a criminal offense? It's because if people do not put that justice architecture in place. If it fails, everybody now starts to fight, you know, everybody starts to break bottle to protect their own interests, to assert their, their rights. And that is why we really, really need judiciary at this moment to rise and really purge itself of any form of um, failure of uh, allegations of corruption and all that. So, um, and, and, and that's, that's one of the reasons why we are here to, 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 to get Nigerians to rise to that place where you are no longer holding, you are not just holding the executive accountable, but you need to also hold the uh, judiciary accountable at this moment, especially with the election petition going on and all that. A lot of times people, you see that you know, they come to uh, once the election is done, the people come to, to the judiciary, to the election tribunal, to try to compromise the judges. And there have been allegations of that, you know, trying to comp compromise the justice. You can see what happened in Kano State, where the, the, the decision is still, you, you still don't really know where it stands at the moment, because some factions are saying that N NNPP won, and some factions are saying that the other person won. But, you know, it, it, it does not improve the confidence that we should have in our judiciary at this moment.
Now, one of the biggest talking points last week was around the concept of Afro-democracy put forward by former President Olusegun Obasanjo. Now, let's look at the judiciary. Uh, if we're saying that in terms of governance, I mean, this is just a theory being put forward, and then mm -hmm. in terms of governance that there is an African brand of democracy that can be proposed. In terms of judiciary, do you think that the systems that we're copying and pasting into our countries Doesn't are work. relevant? Yeah. Do they work? Do they apply to our values and our cultures? One of the most celebrated judiciary in Africa now is the Rwanda justice system because they came they created a culture they created the judiciary out of their culture you know since the genocide they looked inward and created something that would work in the system Nigeria needs to evolve past that stage of following borrowed and paste you know copy and paste system to looking inward and thinking of, okay, what can really work in the Nigerian context? Nigeria is a 200 million people um, country. It's very versatile, multicultural. You can't just keep using the same method that failed over and over and expect that something would change. Nigeria needs to really come back to the drawing board, the NJC specifically, we saddled with the responsibility of overseeing the, the judiciary, needs to come to the drawing board and look at how they need to put things together again that would work in the justice system. Something that would be faster, more efficient, corruption proven, you know, that would that would really protect the interest of groups and and, and, and average common man in, this, in, in the country. It's interesting that you, you, that you mentioned methods because we're hearing from uh, the AGF himself, Latif Bagwimi, mentioning uh, setting things uh, she said that the deployment of alternative dispute resolution, plea bargaining, restorative justice, and even um, I think recently they had talked about being able to reduce the, the, the you know the number of people that we have in prisons, those that yeah. have you know low offenses, so that you know there can be some le level of breathing space in these spaces. So we're also looking at prison reforms as well. Do you how do you assess the potential impact of these methods on the efficiency and fairness of the Nigerian judicial system? Do you is, 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 should that be the focus? Is that the way to go? Are there things that are missing from these solutions that have been put forward by the AGF? I, I think these are brilliant suggestions and initiatives that have been put forward. But some of these initiatives have been tested over time and some have not worked. So the, we need to look at what had worked. The alternative dispute resolution is a fantastic idea which had worked. However, how can we step what has worked? What, how can we step it up? And what has not worked? How can we how can we now look for other other ways? The introduction of tech into the judiciary is other other ways to even reduce the, some of the inefficiencies we, we face in in the judiciary. The the whole world is going through a digital transformation process right now, and the justice system is very archaic. So how can we move away from this and create a user friendly justice system that is tech enabled, that is faster, that an average you and I on the street that it uses um, 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 app to order Okada to, to, to transfer money, can now get a more user-friendly access to justice, that you can, you can connect with the justice, you could, you could get um, your dispute resolution faster. So those are some of the things that the country needs to be exploring at this moment. Be because you can't, you can't keep doing the traditional manual system. You know, an average inmate in Nigerian criminal system is represented by a case file. Once that case file is missing, then you are lost in the system. You are forgotten. That is where you see a lot of people spending five to seven years um, in pretrial detention. But if all these things are digitized, it's more um, proven. It's more. It's more. It's more protected. People are more protected in the system because you have a system that can auto remind people as to okay, this are the, the number of time this person has spent in prison and you shouldn't have spent more than this number of time. And then you have system that is faster. You have um, audio to test generation. Judges will not have to write longer, and it, it takes a long time for you to to start and finish a case. You have a system that you could even set to pretrial. Um, pre preliminary matters in the court system. You have a system that you can file. Can I just interject with you? Yeah. Because we literally just have one minute left. Okay. And you, you know, I love the introduction of tech and uh, and you know just progressive ways for us to enhance our justice system. Mm -hmm. Last week, again, one of the biggest conversation was the clerical error from the court in Kano State. Now. 
My concern is I look at what happened with INEC and the elections and our hope in tech. Yeah. Is tech the right place for us to put our hope in for the judicial system, especially given you look at the, a huge political case that is you know, at stake and a clerical error is allegedly made. Now, if we rely on tech, are we not giving more room uh, for so-called state capture than less, or more room for error even uh, than, than when we're dealing with human beings? So at this moment, our economy is practically being run by tech. The whole banking infrastructure is on, on, on tech. Even in, 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 in other countries, you've seen how their judicial system, how their whole system is run by tech. So I, I believe that we need to find a system that works, and tech actually works. Fine, there may be one or two failures, but some of all these things, with due diligence, it can be protected. And that is why I'm surprised by what happened in Kano, you know, saying that a clerical error happened and, and this is why. It's expected as a judge, there is a level of diligence that is expected from a judge, and not to talk of a JCA, a, court, a judge of and court of appeal. You know, there is a level of expectation. And in, in, in their delivery, in the, the judgment delivery, they said they all read this judgment. So why would you now be citing a, a, a clerical error? More or less, it's an afterthought to me. Because you know, um, a clerical error, if you have read it, if you, you maintain that level of due diligence that you should have as a, as a judge, as a lawyer, there is a level, but as a judge, it's, it's much more higher, like 100% higher. So, and you're not referring to um, um, clerical errors, the slip rule, then it, there is something fishy there that should be investigated. And that was what prompted us recently to, to petition the National Judicial Council to further investigate that. Our petition is sitting before the, the, the NJC at the moment to further investigate that because there is something fishy in that. You can't just cite a clerical error for that. Definitely. I think uh, that's a good place to wrap it up. But when it comes to reforming the judiciary, you know, this is a good first step and we definitely have a long way to go. Thank you for being on here, Mr. Nelson Olani of the Open Justice uh, Alliance.